Often translated as breath, prana is, in fact, the vital energy of life itself. It is the basic material for all that exists. Thus, prana is both the origination of life and its continuation. In many ways, the entire practice of yoga can be understood as an engagement with prana. What happens if you reimagine the breath as creative and spiritual energy? In Sankhyan terminology, purusha is unmanifest prana, or the pure energy of consciousness itself. Prakriti is manifest prana, or the active force of creative energy. The Rig Veda, the oldest of the Vedic texts, includes the creation myth where initially there is nothingness, neither death nor immortality, and no air. Then the breathless begins to breathe on its own. Breath, or prana in this case, is synonymous with life and the creation of life. Another story, found in several Upanishads, describes the vital functions, including speech, sight, hearing, mind, semen, and breath, engaged in an argument about who is the greatest. To settle the dispute, each vital function leaves the body for one year to find out which is most essential. In turn, speech, sight, hearing, mind, and semen each take a year away from the body with no serious repercussions. When it comes time for the breath to depart, the five other functions immediately feel its movement, like a great horse pulling loose from its tether. They all then recognize breath as the most essential and greatest of the vital functions. Breath, or prana in this narrative, is aligned with the self, or atman. Yogic practice often focuses on breath control, or pranayama, as a means for accessing and gaining insight into prana. In English, the terms breath, spirit, and vital energy are not typically synonymous. This paradigm shift, rooted in the profound diversity of the word prana, connects the individual act of breathing to the cosmic experience of being, life, and creation itself. Thank you.